I am seeking advocates, advisors, and angels for those without stable housing. As I mentioned before, this presentation is called Three Compassionate Steps to Eliminating Homelessness. And this is part one of the three by three by three outline that I'm gonna share with you in these few minutes that we have together. But before I continue, I just wanna, I, I wanna throw out the question. And the question, throw out a question. And the question is, can we just agree that the obvious way to, the obvious ways to eliminate homelessness is by putting people in homes and then taking them to the store to get them what they need. Those with a sufficient income, that's how they do it. They rent a home, right? And they go to the store to get what they need. So the equitable way to eliminate homelessness is by doing just that. Now a word about compassion. The reason why this is specifically stating compassion, using the word compassionate to describe the steps is because compassion is a very special word to me. It's very important to me. For one, because of my background and because of my relationship with my higher power, I, one of the books of scriptures I refer to is the Bible. And in the Bible, there's a parable that's called the parable of the Good Samaritan. For me, it's called the parable of the exceptional Samaritan because what he did was far more than good. And so in that parable, the word compassion is used and it is used to describe what the what the Samaritan has towards this man that he finds laying injured on the ground, who is wounded to the point where he is left half dead, the scripture says. And so the, when I read that, I really wanted to know what compassion was and what had com what compelled him to help this person. And compassion basically means that you have this deep um, feeling of sorrow for the suffering of another, along with an intense desire to alleviate that suffering. And so these three compassionate steps to eliminating homelessness are ones that will call out to you and say, I can help make that happen. I can do that. I can participate with others. And so that's why I'm seeking advocates, advisors, and angels to help bring this outline to pass. So step one is to meet the needs and the wants of people. And that goes back to putting people in home, putting people in homes and taking them to the store to get them what they need. But it's really not that simple because those needs persist. Once they're in a home, those other needs will persist. They will need more food. They will need clothing for the season. They may need medication and toiletries and different things of that nature. So it's not that easy, but it's a beginning. Number two, is to provide the assurance of protection. This is where I say we need to kiss our homeless, keeping it Samaritan style. It's not about anything else. It's about keeping it Samaritan style. And the assurance of protection means that in this parable, the Samaritan is only able to stay with the wounded man that he picked up for one night. The story tells us that he picked him up off the road, he took him to the inn, he stayed for a night, and then when he was getting ready to leave, he left money with the innkeeper to make sure that this man was taken care of, and even promised that if whatever more the innkeeper kept, innkeeper spent, that the Samaritan would, would repay him. And so that means that this wounded man lay in a bed because he was half dead when the Samaritan found him, there's no guarantee that he even knew who the Samaritan was. And that's beautiful to me. But what he could be guaranteed is that he had a space to complete his healing so that he could get back on the road to wherever he was going. So for our homeless, those who are homeless after we meet their wants and needs and put them in a home, give them what they need, we have to let them know that they are welcome to stay there. Provide them, with the, provide them with a framework that lets them know what they are able to do while they're in that space and help them to understand that they are there for at least a year until their healing is complete and they feel that they can move forward into the next aspect of their life. Step three, retrain the nervous system to exist in a state of rest and digest through paid training. And so what happens when you go through homelessness, and especially if you're unemployed, then you don't have a record of employment, which means that you're not going to be eligible for social security benefits. 
it also means you have no income coming in. And so if we're really gonna provide an assurance of protection for people, then this is so incredible. Um, and retraining the nervous system is so important because we all live out of our nervous systems. We just, most of us don't know that. We live out of our nervous systems before our brains kick in, our bodies respond to any perceived threat before our brains even have a chance to analyze the situation. And so when you can give people information that will help them change how their nervous system behaves, that will help them to change the, the subconscious conditioning that has happened in their, in their brains, then you empower people to exist in a state of rest and digest which is simply they exist in a state of calm and a state of peace. And I want to suggest in a state of happiness. <sighs>